Monday's indictments of President Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, and his deputy, Rick Gates, have sent shockwaves through Washington. Combined with the guilty plea of former advisor George Papadopoulos, many are wondering what is in store for the White House. Seth Abramson is a former public defender and a professor at the University of New Hampshire, and he joins me now. So, Seth, you have been tweeting extensively about where you think special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation goes from here. Can you explain that briefly, where it goes next, and why you think that? Well, if Mr. Mueller hasn't spoken to all of them already, he'll want to talk to the other members of Mr. Trump's National Security Advisory Committee, as that was the committee that orchestrated the GOP platform change in July of 2016, and also it was the committee that met at Trump International Hotel in D.C. on March 31st, 2016, at which point Mr. Pa uh, Papadopoulos revealed to Mr. Trump directly that he was a Kremlin intermediary. Well, you've tweeted that the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, has committed perjury. What do you base that on, and what are the implications there? Well, on several occasions while testifying before Congress under oath, Mr. Sessions made statements that were not true, and which in context we know were not true. Uh, as a defense attorney, there are many situations in which someone uh, does not tell the truth while under oath because they believe that telling the truth would have more dire consequences than a perjury charge would. So there's a possibility that Mr. Sessions will be looked at very closely, possibly even as a target by Mr. Mueller as he continues in his probe. Let's talk specifically, though. What are the statements that you're referring to, these statements by Jeff Sessions? Well, Mr. Sessions was asked, I think, pretty clearly uh, about his meetings with Russians or his knowledge of others' meetings with Russians or contacts with Russians during the uh, 2016 presidential campaign. He indicated that not only had he not met with any Russians, which of course turned out not to be true, he had three such meetings, but also that he knew of no one else having any contact with Russians. Uh, given these statements made by Mr. Papadopoulos in his recent plea affidavit, it doesn't seem as though that's an accurate statement either. And just today, Senator Franken sent a lengthy letter with extensive footnotes to Mrs. Mr. Sessions uh, detailing his misstatements or false statements to Congress in the multiple times that he testified under oath. Uh, meanwhile, the president's pick to be the Department of Agriculture's chief scientist, Sam Clovis, has withdrawn his name from consideration. You say it had to do with his ties to the Russia probe. Can you elaborate on that? Well, we know that Mr. Clovis recently testified in front of the grand jury. We know also that he was the national co-chair of the Trump campaign and that he actually made all the hires for the National Security Advisory Committee. I think that there's some real fear on the part of Mr. Clovis. Uh, certainly, if I were his attorney, I would have fear as his attorney that while put under oath at any nomination hearings, he would be asked about his testimony in front of the grand jury and those individuals who he hired for the National Security Advisory Committee, including Carter Page and George Papadopoulos. All right. Uh, a, a lot of unanswered questions at this moment. Seth Abramson, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it.